Hello everyone, welcome to the Geoecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and in today's session on climatology, we are going to discuss about one of the most important topics of climatology and that is about temperature distribution on horizontal earth surface. So, we are going to discuss about the factors associated to this temperature distribution in details. But before we go ahead, do like and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to share it with others as well. So now, let's learn about temperature distribution. So in earlier lectures, we have already understood about insulation, about latitudinal heat balance and heat budget on the earth surface. But the importance is given to the distribution as well because in geography, we are concerned about the spatial and temporal distribution of phenomena. So similarly, we are talking here about temperatures. So how is this temperature distributed all across the earth? And why is it important? So the first point is that this spatial and temporal distribution of temperature is important because it helps to regulate such phenomena like weather, climate, vegetation zones, animals, human life. So it has largely the most important role to sustain all these processes. So basically, it depends upon the temperature distribution that is horizontal or vertical that these processes will go on in what ways. So that's why temperature distribution is important. The study of this distribution of temperature has been attempted in various ways. So temporal and spatial are the two major important ways in which we discuss this temperature distribution. And in geography, we are more concerned about the spatial distribution of this phenomena across these latitudes and longitudes on the earth. Right. So that is important. So the spatial distribution studies are divided into vertical distribution and horizontal distribution. So let's first discuss the horizontal distribution of temperature in today's session and the sessions to come. We'll be talking about the vertical distribution of temperature as well. So what is this horizontal distribution of temperature? It basically means right from the equator to the poles and from this prime meridian to this entire 360 degree. It basically means the surface part, right? So this entire surface distribution of this temperature, we are going to discuss in horizontal distribution of temperature. So let's elaborate furthermore. So this horizontal distribution of temperature is also known as this particular name. Now this is very familiar name in geography that is regional distribution of temperature as well. So remember in nature and scope part we discussed about how climatology gained its regional character right in the beginning of 20th century. So this is where it is important that this regional distribution of temperature is also important as it helps us to understand the settlements, the planning, the human aspects of it and also the associated flora fauna distribution. So that is where it is important to understand this horizontal distribution of temperature. But understanding the horizontal distribution of temperature without the factors is not possible. So first let's analyze how these factors are important and along with it we'll understand automatically how these factors are responsible for the distribution of temperature on the entire earth across latitudes and longitudes that is the horizontal factor. So there are a variety of factors that are important and almost eight factors are listed here. So let's see these eight factors. What are these factors? The first is the latitudes that is basically what distance from equator is also supposed to be the factor. Now why is this factor important? Remember equator is the zero degree latitude and equator to this tropics remember 23 and half north and south this is the zone where maximum solar insulation is received right because of this vertical rays that you see so that is important that this is the surplus region remember the latitudinal heat balance so this is why the distance from equator is one of the factors that is important for horizontal distribution of temperature as we go away from this zone the differences in temperature are quite clearly visible so that's why these latitudinal differences are important, which we have already discussed in details in latitudinal heat balance as well. So height from sea level is another factor that is basically about altitudinal zonation. So remember, 
with varying altitude as well on earth there is a difference in distribution of temperature and remember in humboldt and ritter's lecture we talked that when humboldt actually went to south america to study this he found out this impact of altitude as well and the temperature differences as well and altitudinal sickness as well so that was important point that contributed to climatology that with altitude there is a difference in temperature as well and we discuss that in details when we also talk about vertical distribution of temperature where lapse rate is important phenomena so altitudinal variations are one of the important factors so first factor was latitude then we have altitude and then next factor is distance from the sea coast so sea coast is important why because sea water and land water has differential heating and then there is a wind which comes from land to sea and sea to land so we know that land breeze and sea breeze then we have nature of land and water remember nature of land and water are different because they heat differently they cool differently so that's important then we have the properties or the nature of ground surface where albedo is one of the major functions we have already talked about albedo right the reflection or the reflectivity coefficient so that is important that varies surface to surface then we have nature of the slopes so on different kinds of slopes the temperature varies differently then we have prevailing wind factor and ocean current factor that are important messengers regulators of this entire horizontal distribution of temperature we have discussed a little about these factors in the latitudinal heat balance in previous lectures so if you have not watched that video go to the playlist in climatology and watch that video on latitudinal heat balance as well so now one by one let's discuss these factors and understand how they help or aid or how they control or regulate this horizontal distribution of temperature on the earth's surface so the first factor what we see here is the latitude or distance from equator as we see so from equator to the pole remember this in latitudinal heat balance what we discussed this is the zone of surplus and then there is this energy shifting polewards this surplus energy is now actually going to the deficit areas so what happens the temperature of the atmosphere of a particular place near the ground surface depends upon amount of insulation and this amount of insulation is the factor that varies across latitudes that is important to understand so you see here in this image there is this vertical rays coming and then there is a slanting or oblique rays so remember we have discussed when there is obliquity what happens the distribution of energy is in larger area and when it is vertical it is in smaller area so that is that factor which determines this differences in temperature from equator to poles across various latitudes so that is important here as distance from equator factor then the next factor is the height from sea level or altitude so this height from sea level or altitude is important in terms of this something called lapse rate factor remember as we increase in altitude in troposphere what happens there is a fall in temperature that is about 6.5 degrees c per kilometer we will be doing separate lectures on lapse rate and adiabatic lapse rate in which we will be discussing in that in details but here you can understand that major source of atmospheric heat on the earth surface from where heat is transferred to the atmosphere through the process of conduction radiation convection so these are the three process conduction is directly in contact radiation is through the radiation insulation that we know and convection is through convection cycle so these are the important physical processes in details of these processes you can go to the ncert is also and you can study what is this convection conduction and radiation but for now these are the physical processes that lead to this regulation of temperature from one place to the other it helps to maintain this balance so the portion of the atmosphere coming in direct contact with the earth surface now this is about conduction from the heat of the ground that is important and when there is an accent there is a convection happening and then there is something which is long wave radiation we have understood that in heat budget as well the earth releases that heat as a long wave radiation portion now these are important regulators that is important and the layers of air are denser near earth surface and as we go in altitude the density decreases right so air becomes lighter and with increasing altitude its density decreases and so does the temperature so what happens in troposphere specifically the areas that are closer to the ground will have greater energy will have greater temperature as they have this 
radiation is also coming from the earth the lower layer of air contains more water vapor as well and now you remember water vapor has something called latent heat that is the hidden part that is the hidden energy and that also is important then it also has dust particles and layers and hence it absorbs the large amount of heat radiated from the earth's surface and that is why it maintains the temperature over the ground surface so areas closer to the ground are supposed to be warmer and as you go away from the ground that is increasing in altitude the temperature decreases that is the normal lapse rate or environmental lapse rate that we say. Now the next important factor is the distance from the sea coast. This factor is also referred to as continentality. So remember the evolution of geographical thought lectures. If you have not watched, go to the Humboldt and Ritter lecture. Do watch that Humboldt actually discovered this phenomena in South America when he was doing his field work that the continental interiors have different climate zones and this areas closure to the sea have different impacts. So what happens? This continentality factor is there. As you go away from this coast to the interiors of the continent, there is a difference in temperature and the long term climate as well. So the marine environment moderates the weather conditions near the coastal areas. That is important. So if this area is near the coast area, so what happens? If you have ever traveled to a coastal area or a sea beach, you will find that this sea factor has a moderating impact on this adjoining area. So that's important. And why it is important? Because there is a rhythm that there is a land to sea breeze and sea to land breeze. That is important. So it is called sea breeze when it is coming from the sea. And it is called land breeze. It is coming from the land. Remember, there is a rhythm of land and sea breeze, which is also called onshore and offshore. Remember, if it is coming from the sea towards the land, that is called sea breeze or onshore. And if it is going away from land, it is called land breeze or offshore, right? So that is important to understand. So what is the impact? The impact is on daily range of temperature near the coastal environment. And remember, the daily range of temperature is called diurnal range. Now this diurnal range of temperature, that is difference between the highest and the lowest, that is this entire range. So suppose the highest was 24 degree and lowest was 10 degree. So what is this range? Almost a 14 degree. Now this is minimum. Minimum where? In these coastal beds. This variation is very minimum. Right? That's important that this range is minimum where there is this land and sea breeze interaction happening. But as you go to the continental interiors, there is an extremity happening. So there will be like 30 degree or 35 degrees and then the night temperatures would be 20 degrees. So this diurnal range of temperature is maximum in continental interiors and minimum on the coastal areas. That is an important point to remember. So what happens? The minimum daily range of temperature is the characteristic feature of a marine climate. While extremely high daily range of temperature is characteristics of continental climate. And this entire phenomena that is moving away from the coast going to the interior of the continent, this phenomena changes from minimum to maximum. This is called continentality. So I hope now you'll understand this exactly, that continentality is the difference in this minimum and maximum of this daily range of temperatures that varies from the coastal areas to the continental interiors. The next factor is the nature of land and water. Now the nature of the land and water is contrasting that we know. So it has a contrasting, antagonic, different natures, right? And it has definitely lots of effects in terms of the spatial and temporal distribution of temperature, if we see. And why? These are the reasons. The first reason is that sun's rays penetrate to a depth of only one meter in land. That is important. So there is not much of the penetration of sun rays because it is opaque, the land is opaque and the light cannot penetrate. So it means the energy is largely reduced to a particular layer of land itself, right, at a particular depth only. But remember in water it can go to several meters, right. So this is the major difference that there is a difference of amount of energy in terms of the land and water. Then what we see is the heat is concentrated at a particular place where insulation is received. 
So this we already know at particular places where insulation is received that is where the maximum heat is concentrated and there is very slow process of redistribution of heat by conduction. Now remember the conduction process is the slowest one right because it is about the contact. So if this is land surface and this is air surface this is the contact and in conduction this is slow transference of heat. So if one portion of land is heated, the adjoining portion of land will be heated along the contact only in a very slow manner. That is important. But that is not in the case of water. If a portion of water is heated, it will automatically transfer the heat to the adjoining molecules of water and gradually the heat transfer will happen faster. So that is important. There is more evaporation from the seas. Now this is important example. You know the world ocean surface is the greater surface. Land is limited. So there is more evaporation from the seas and the oceans and hence more heat is spent in this process. Now the next factor is this specific heat factor. And what is this specific heat factor? It is basically that amount of heat which is needed to raise the temperature of one gram of water by one degree C. Now why is it important? Because specific heat of water is much greater. So what will happen? It will require more amount of heat, almost five times more heat to raise the temperature in comparison to the land surface. So that is also important in temperature distribution and apart from that the relative density of water is much more lower than that of the land surface. We already know that water is less dense, land is more dense. So accordingly it also has differentials in terms of the amount of heat that it preserves. And next factor we already know is this reflection factor that is albedo. So we have already learned in details that incoming solar radiation from the oceanic water surface is far more than from the land surface. So remember this is insulation factor that we have already discussed in details. Thus what happens? The water receives less insulation than the land and that's where the temperature differentials will be there. Then what happens? Oceanic areas are generally clouded. Now another factor is that cloud factor. So remember if it is more clouded what will happen? They receive less insulation than land. So cloud obstructs, it also reflects back most of the insulation. So that is another factor. That's why nature of land and water is one of the major factors related to this creation of entire distribution pattern or spatial distribution of temperature on Earth's surface. Now let's look at this nature of ground surface in detail. What do you see? Ground surface has color, vegetation, land use practices that are important. These factors affect the distribution of temperature. So snow covered areas, you remember snow has this important thing that albedo is the highest. So it will reflect most of the in incoming wave or incoming short wave solar radiation. So what happens? The polar areas or arctic areas are characterized by extremely low temperatures. But on the other hand, if you see sandy surface, that is the desert areas during daytime, they absorb most of the solar radiation and that's why they have this amount of high amount of heat concentration there. Right? So that is important. And if you look into this particular table, what you find that percentage of radiation being reflected is maximum here where there is a snow cover. Then sand, then grass, then dry ground, then wet ground. So this is the sequence that you need to remember that these surfaces have differential kind of nature in terms of albedo that we see. Right? In terms of percentage of radiation that they reflect back. So remember this comparison that which has highest, which has lowest and how it manages this distribution of temperature on Earth's surface. Then comes the nature of the slopes. So nature of the slopes are important. Why? Remember, sun's ray fall differently on different kinds of slopes. So ground slope facing the sun receives more insulation because sun's rays reach the surface more or less straight manner, right? But if it is a slanting surface, Remember, the sun rays are basically oblique on these surfaces. So what happens because of this? Remember, in northern hemisphere. Now remember, northern hemisphere is important because we are talking about most of the land areas exist in northern hemisphere. So in northern hemisphere, if we see this southward facing slope. So remember this globe and this is your northern hemisphere. So which is your south here? The south is this direction and sun is moving like this, right? So what happens? This is south. So this south facing slope receive maximum insulation. 
So what will be the temperature on south facing slopes in northern hemisphere? It will be warmer. So if it is a mountain slope with snow, most snow accumulation will melt down if it is south facing, right? But it will be suitable for agriculture, horticulture. So that is important. That's where it is important in that Alps and Himalayan region have more settlements and cultivation where on the southern slopes. Why? Because the ice or snow quickly melts on the southern slope. That's where the nature of slope is important. Apart from that, you have heard of this wind direction and the windward side and the leeward side of the mountain and rainfall happens where? On the windward side. This is the drier side. So that's where the temperature regulation also is there. This is the cooler side. This is drier and warmer side. So there is difference on the mountain slopes itself right in terms of the precipitation received and temperature regulation as well that's where nature of slopes become one of the most important factors in temperature distribution then the most important factor is the prevailing wind after that we have already discussed in the latitudinal heat balance how these important winds help to transfer the energy from the surplus region to the deficit region and in details we are going to learn about the entire wind system in the lectures to come so prevailing winds help in redistribution of this temperature and it carries the moderate effects of oceans to the adjacent areas so land breeze sea breeze remember from local winds to the planetary winds it has lots of impact on the temperature regulation that is important to remember and the factor that is the ocean currents does what it takes the energy the heat from the equatorial region and takes it to the polar region to regulate this right from the surplus to the deficit in latitudinal heat balance also we discussed it for example gulf stream it raises the average temperature of the coastal areas of where northwestern europe right so northwestern europe this area it raises the temperature right and while Kuroshio warm current raises the temperature of Japanese coast so where is Japanese coast remember this so this warm current raises the temperature here so if it is a warm current it will regulate automatically the coastal areas temperature but at the same time if it is a cold current like Labrador Peru California these currents are cold in nature so what will happen it will have an impact on the coastal areas and it will reduce the temperature of the coastal areas right so that is where this equalization of temperature is maintained through this entire regulation you see here in this image that is important that ocean currents are regulatory bodies regulatory factors that are one of the most important factors for the regulation of temperature across the globe and the cloud cover factor that we already discussed that if it is a cloudy situation what will happen it will have an impact on the local daily and seasonal temperature clouds also do not permit insulation to come inside and it also reflects energy but also remember what happens if it is a cloudy area then what happens to the long wave radiation it is trapped inside land and the cloud so that is also leading to warmer days and nights if it is a cloudy night so that is important that cloudy nights and days are warmer and cloudless nights and days are cooler because this is a layer that is created when the earth receives the heat it radiates back so when it radiates back there is a shield created by the cloud so this area has this fixed temperature which keeps it warm so that is important that cloud cover also leads to this important fluctuations or distribution of these temperatures on local basis daily basis seasonal basis that's why it is an important factor that we understand in temperature distribution so now when we have discussed about the horizontal distribution of temperature on earth's surface and various factors associated to it in today's session in this sessions to come we are going to talk about the vertical distribution of temperature the lapse rate the adiabatic lapse rate and so many other topics so stay tuned stay safe keep watching